Just how far are you willing to earn a few bucks? From Lou Pearlman to Charles Ponzi to Franks Abenail. History is studded with a long list of men and women who have conned their way into living a life of luxury. Welcome back to my channel and today we will be talking about one such man who was able to orchestrate history's largest ever Ponzi scheme, Bernie Madoff. This is Fraud Explained. To enjoy more videos, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell or else I'll be looking into you too. Bernard Lawrence Bernie Madoff was born on April 29, 1938 in Queens, New York to parents Ralph Madoff and Sylvia Muntner. He is the middle child of three children and they grew up in the predominantly Jewish neighborhood of Laurelton. He graduated from Hofstra University with a degree in political science in 1960. Shortly after, he founded his own investment company, Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities, alongside his wife, Ruth Madoff. The Madoffs opened the firm with the $5,000 Bernie had earned while working as a lifeguard and a sprinkler installer and they specialized in penny stocks or stocks of small public companies that are traded for less than a dollar. Saul Alpern, Ruth Madoff's father, also loaned the couple another $5,000 to get their business off the ground. Saul, an accountant, was also instrumental in the firm's growth as he referred friends and other family members to the investment company. From there, the Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities began to grow. However, the Madoff's investment company faced tough competition with firms and agencies that were members of the New York Stock Exchange. To combat this, the Madoffs decided to use advanced information technology to further promote their firm. The technology that the firm used was eventually known as the NASDAQ, or the National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotations. So just how much was Bernie Madoff able to gain from defrauding people? The answer is a hefty sum of $65 billion. Keep watching to see how he was able to pull it off. With his investment securities company growing, Madoff became known as the bane of the New York Stock Exchange. They were able to execute an average of $740 million worth of trades every day. With the growth of the firm, Madoff brought in some members of the family to work for him. Bernie's younger brother, Peter, was made the senior managing director and chief compliance officer, while his niece, Shauna, became the compliance attorney. Bernie Madoff's sons, Mark and Andrew, worked in trading. Charles Weiner, Madoff's nephew, also worked for his uncle's firm. The Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities Company grew to be so successful that by the year 2000, the firm held a rough estimate of $300 million worth of assets. Now. How did Bernie Madoff start scamming people out of their hard-earned money? No one knows for sure when the exact time was, but the expert analysts think that it began during the early 1980s. Madoff made sure to surround himself with wealthy and powerful men from New York City in Florida. He developed close friendships with them and got them to invest in his companies. He was able to give them hefty returns to their investments, which in turn led to them recommending Madoff's investment company to fellow businessmen. To add to this, Madoff also used his reputation as a successful stocksbroker and master marketer to entice people into investing in his company. His work as a money manager for his wealthy clientele also served to boost investors. He also made it seem like an exclusive club, turning away investors who did not fit his standards. Suddenly, everyone who had the means wanted to be one of Madoff's investors, and it became a status symbol of sorts to be one. I know what you're wondering. How does a family man running a business built up by family end up becoming one of America's most notorious swindlers? Watch until the end to find out. Madoff's scam was identified as an affinity Ponzi scheme because being Jewish himself, Madoff targeted affluent and influential members and organizations of the Jewish community. Affinity frauds occur when particular religious or ethnic groups are targeted for the scheme and used for one's personal gain. Jacob Ezra Merkin, a prominent Jewish investor and philanthropist, was one of Bernie Madoff's most vocal promoters and was able to drive roughly $1 billion and $800 million into Madoff's fund. To better explain Madoff's money-making method, let's first dive into the basics of what a Ponzi scheme is. A Ponzi scheme is a form of financial fraud where investors are lured to invest their money into a fund with a promise of high returns, 
only for them to be paid off by the money new investors would shell out. However, unlike typical Ponzi schemes that paid investors an interest of 20% or higher and collapse in a matter of months, Bernie Madoff's scheme had a consistent 10% return on investment. Analysts have said that these consistent returns helped Madoff's scam run as long as they did. Another factor that contributed to the longevity of Madoff's scheme was the use of feeder funds, or investments that are poured into a master fund and controlled by one entity. Bernie Madoff's investment company took charge of the money and made millions of dollars off it, unbeknownst to those who had invested the money. Even though there were many who wanted to invest in Bernard L. Madoff investment securities, there were a few who doubted the legitimacy of Madoff's operation. Those who were skeptical of Madoff's methods criticized the consistent returns, saying that it was unrealistic for the returns to be that consistent through the constant rise and fall of the market. However, in spite of rising suspicion and a very detailed investigation by Harry Markopoulos, a financial expert submitted to the Security Exchange Commission, no sanctions were made against Bernie Madoff. Even though Madoff's bank accounts showed signs of illegal activities like money laundering, nobody seemed to bat an eyelid. This was because Madoff was, at least during the first few years, always able to deliver the payout. He was also able to build up people's trust in him. For a while, it seemed that Madoff was getting away with the scam. Little did he know that his luck was about to turn. In 2008, the Bernie L. Madoff Investment Securities Company was badly hit by the global financial crisis. His funds collapsed, and his company was unable to pay back its debts. Marco Polos and his team, who had already been on Madoff's case since 2005, were able to discover evidence of Madoff's illegal activities. Public distrust towards the banking industry skyrocketed when reputable investments firms Lehman Brothers declared bankruptcy, and many investors tried to withdraw their money from Madoff's firm. Pretty soon, Madoff's funds ran low, with still so many people asking to cash out their investments. On December 10, 2008, Bernie Madoff found himself in a rut. He had planned to give out bonuses worth millions of dollars to his staff, but was questioned by his sons, Mark and Andrew. The two were confused as to why their father would give out bonuses if they could not even pay back those who had invested in their company. Left with no choice, Bernie Madoff confessed the scam to his sons, saying that he was finished and that he had nothing left. Horrified, Mark and Andrew Madoff reported him to the federal authorities. Bernie Madoff was arrested the next day. He was then made to forfeit nearly $200 million in assets and was sentenced to 150 years in prison for fraud and theft. Those working on the case were appalled because Madoff did not only victimize innocent individuals, but he also stole from numerous charities and foundations. However, the story doesn't end there. Madoff's scam had long-lasting effects on those around him. Watch on to see what I mean. The repercussion of Madoff's crimes were so great, its impact was felt all over the world. A few notable foundations that had invested in Madoff's fund, like the Picoer Fund and the Innocence Project, both of which were set up to help the less fortunate, announced that they were closing down to the lack of resources. Both foundations had invested huge sums of money in hopes of building the funds they could use to help out their constituents, but they were never able to gain their money back. Madoff's schemes also led to the loss of some lives, the most notable one being that of his own son, Mark Madoff. On December 11, 2010, Mark Madoff was found dead in his apartment. He had hung himself using a dog leash in an apparent suicide, but the police did not find any suicide note. It was said that after the scandal broke out, Bernie Madoff's sons, Mark and Andrew, had taken their father's wrongdoings really badly. Mark had attempted to find another job in trading on Wall Street, but was unsuccessful, probably because of the rest of the Madoffs were under scrutiny for the possible parts that they played in Bernie Madoff's scheme. However, of all the family members who were suspected of being complicit in the Madoff Ponzi scheme, only Peter Madoff was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison for falsifying information and obstructing justice. In February 2020, Bernie Madoff appealed to have an early release after discovering that he was dying from kidney disease. His call for compassion angered some of his victims, who have still not rebuilt their own fortunes following Madoff's scandal. He had ruined thousands of lives and had scammed people of billions of dollars. 
In June 2020, a judge denied Madoff's request for compassionate release, saying that he deserves to spend the rest of his life in jail for his crimes. Bernie Madoff's story remains to be one of the most scandalous ones in American history. If you were Bernie, what would you have done? Share your thoughts and comments down below and I'll be responding to all comments in the first hour. If you were surprised to learn about how Bernie Madoff pulled off the biggest financial fraud in American history, why not check out my other video on how Ponzi schemes work to learn where Ponzi schemes came from. Stay tuned, stay educated.